So I, I brought back up performers, <laughs> sort of like Bloomberg's sign language interpreter, kind of like that. So you ready? Uh, this is Savannah on the left, and I know she's a potential Georgia Tech student, and Pam, who's one of my volunteers. I'm Ruth Farmer from NCWIT, and I'm here to talk about NCWIT aspirations in computing. Aspirations in computing is our talent development pipeline program. You may have heard of us. If you haven't heard of us, give us give me five minutes. If you haven't heard of us, um, then you know I might have to figure out. So aspirations in computing is about potential, potential like Savannah here, the unrealized potential of technically inclined young women all over the U.S. Girls who are interested, capable, and excited about technology, they are out there. It's about giving them a great big dose of encouragement, inviting them into a community of peers and connecting them to the networks and the opportunities they need to succeed. Why? Because they need it and because we need them. There's a lot of them. There's, uh, this is just the applicants from 2013. Since 2009, more than 10,000 girls have registered for this program. That's 10,000 girls that self-identify as technical, enough to sign up for a technical award program. So the question is, how do we get them to stay on this pathway to a technical career? Training and hiring teachers won't happen fast enough, and guidance counselors are stretched very, very thin with you know, 300 to 500 students per counselor. So how do we make sure they know what's possible? And then we're facing this big uphill battle of the media and forces at work to discourage girls from seeing themselves as technical. Peer pressure, discouragement even from family and other and teachers. So either they're not there at all, or they're an accessory. They're on the margins. They're the antithesis of the technical person, the girl who doesn't get that nerd stuff and is there to be pretty and funny and just, oh my gosh, I'm so confused about all these things you're doing that are so smart. So, they're the consumers of technology, not the experts. So a teacher of ours shared a story of a student wearing an IBM Master the Mainframe t-shirt in line at Starbucks with her boyfriend. Man comes up behind her and says, which one of you Master the Mainframe? She says, I did. And he goes, oh, I thought you borrowed your boyfriend's t-shirt. Oh. So the message is coming at them both overtly and covertly. Girls, you don't belong here. This is just one of the many obstacles in front of them. If you add in the fact that there's classes are virtually unavailable, that's a big problem. So what we're doing about it is recognizing high school girls for their interests, achievement, and aspirations in computing, their potential, connecting them to each other. Lots of them. We plan to recognize a thousand girls annually from here on out through 55 award events, and all kinds of girls. So girls that fit the stereotype, girls that surprise everyone and don't fit the stereotype, and then girls like Emily. So Emily is a great example. She was absolutely not in the pipeline. Poor grades, low income, first person in her family to graduate from high school. She was not going to get into college. But she got our award, and she got connected to Indiana and Purdue and a bunch of other universities, and they fought over her. And now she's a freshman at Purdue. So it's also a community. We bring these girls together in person at award events, meetups, reunions. They do technical projects together. They're building a mobile app. They're doing video contests. They're doing game design together. And then they connect on Facebook. They have these conversations, these beautiful conversations where they are telling each other, um, giving advice, inviting each other to come visit them at college, all to reinforce their technical interests and provide them the support they need when the going gets rough. We also provide visibility, like inviting Savannah here. We get girls to present and speak on half of NCWIT. We go to conferences like Hopper and SWE. We take them to the White House. Um, we have girls at the CSA Week kickoff in New York City took some girls to Hollywood this year. And then we've got more than 30 universities that give automatic scholarships to these girls. And we connect them to the REUs and Academic Alliance members, and that's one of our girls with a major executive from Microsoft. So anything we can do to give them connections and opportunities. All made possible by the NSF-funded NCWIT infrastructure, which um, makes this possible and connects us to all these different groups. 40% of NCWIT organizations participate in aspirations, and nationwide, close to 400 organizations. Volunteers, 
Um, committee members like Pam, more than 1,500 people from all over the country that participate in making this happen, including men, which is fantastic. And they pick the girls, they recognize them publicly, and give them all the things they need locally. So here we have this year 54 programs that will recognize 1,000 girls. We're in Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Alaska, Hawaii, the Dakotas, Jane Craig going to Montana for us. So there's programs all over the country, every girl's within a couple of hours. So let's get these women back into technology since we uh, had a big part in creating this field. Let's make sure women are part of it. available for recruitment. <laughs> <laughs>